Imagine setting off on a road trip where charging stops simply don't exist. No hunting for fast chargers, no range anxiety creeping in as the miles tick by. Just driving hundreds of miles at a time, powered by nothing more than sunlight and an incredibly efficient battery. It sounds like a bold promise, almost unbelievable, yet that's exactly what Aptera is claiming with its solar electric vehicle. And the most astonishing part isn't the claim itself, it's the data backing it up. During real-world coast-down testing in the Mojave Desert, the vehicle rolled for more than three minutes after hitting 60 miles per hour, covering nearly two miles before coming to a complete stop. That kind of efficiency doesn't just raise eyebrows, it forces a complete rethink of what's possible in automotive design. To understand how Aptera achieves this, everything begins with a single number, 100 watt-hours per mile. That figure changes everything. Most modern electric vehicles consume between 300 and 350 watt-hours per mile. Even some of the most efficient EVs on the market struggle to dip below 250. Aptera's target isn't a minor improvement, it's a radical shift. At 100 watt-hours per mile, energy suddenly stretches much further. A 100 kilowatt-hour battery no longer means good range, it means a thousand miles. Even a much smaller battery can comfortably deliver hundreds of miles, redefining what long range actually looks like. The most powerful contributor to this efficiency is aerodynamics, and this is where Aptera completely breaks away from convention. With a drag coefficient of just 0.13, the vehicle operates in territory no production car has ever reached. For comparison, vehicles celebrated for aerodynamic excellence typically sit between 0.20 and 0.23. Reducing drag by even a few hundredths is considered an engineering victory. Aptera didn't shave hundredths, it rewrote the scale entirely. At highway speeds, air resistance becomes the dominant force working against a vehicle. Every improvement in aerodynamic shape directly reduces the energy needed to maintain speed. Aptera's teardrop-inspired form isn't designed for style, it's designed for pressure recovery. Air flows smoothly around the vehicle, expands after the widest point, and gently recompresses behind it. When executed correctly, this process reduces turbulence and even provides a subtle forward push. Wind tunnel testing confirmed that the final shape exceeded expectations, validating years of simulation and refinement. The details matter just as much as the overall form. The wheel fairings are sculpted to align perfectly with airflow. The front wheels taper inward, then outward, guiding air instead of disrupting it. The rear wheel sits along the center line, where bodywork ahead of it manages airflow before it ever touches rubber. Eliminating the fourth wheel reduces one entire source of drag and rolling resistance. Nothing here is accidental. Every surface exists for a reason. But efficiency isn't just about slicing through air, it's about moving as little mass as possible. Aptera's lightweight construction plays a massive role in extending range. Depending on battery size, the vehicle weighs roughly between 1,800 and 2,200 pounds. That's nearly half of the weight of many electric cars on the road today. Less mass means less energy needed to accelerate, less rolling resistance, and lower energy demands across the board. This weight reduction comes from an advanced composite body made using resin-infused sandwich core structures combining carbon fiber and fiberglass. The result is a shell that's lighter than aluminum, yet exceptionally strong. Instead of hundreds of stamped metal panels welded together, the vehicle relies on a small number of large structural components. This dramatically reduces part count, fasteners, and unnecessary mass. The obsession with weight extends to every system. 
wiring is minimized by co-locating electronics, protective housings are replaced with lightweight coatings, each gram saved compounds into real-world efficiency gains. When the vehicle accelerates, it needs less power. When it climbs hills, it expends less energy. When it brakes, it recovers more through regeneration. Rolling resistance is another often overlooked factor, and here again, Aptera takes a different path. With only three wheels touching the road, friction is inherently reduced. Specially designed low-resistance tires further minimize energy losses. The aerodynamic enclosures around the wheels prevent turbulence from stealing momentum. This combination played a key role in the vehicle's remarkable coast-down performance, where it simply refused to slow down in the way most vehicles do. Powertrain efficiency adds another critical layer. Instead of a traditional drivetrain with transmissions, differentials, and drive shafts, Aptera uses direct in-wheel motors. Power goes straight to the wheels with minimal losses. The result is efficient acceleration without the mechanical complexity that normally wastes energy. Regenerative braking captures momentum during deceleration, converting it back into usable electricity rather than letting it disappear as heat. And then there's the feature that sets Aptera apart from every other vehicle on the road, solar integration. The vehicle's body incorporates roughly 34 square feet of high-efficiency solar cells capable of producing up to 700 watts under ideal conditions. In practical terms, that can translate into as much as 40 miles of driving per day from sunlight alone. For many drivers, that exceeds their daily needs entirely. Solar charging has been attempted before, but it rarely works in conventional vehicles. The reason is simple inefficiency. When a car consumes hundreds of watt-hours per mile, solar input barely makes a dent. But when consumption drops to around 100 watt-hours per mile, everything changes. Suddenly, solar energy isn't symbolic, it's meaningful. Over the course of a year, those daily solar miles can add up to more than 10,000 miles driven without ever plugging in. Of course, real-world driving always introduces variables. Speed still matters. Higher velocities increase aerodynamic drag, but because Aptera's baseline drag is so low, the penalty is far smaller than in traditional vehicles. Temperature affects battery chemistry, yet the vehicle's innovative thermal management system dissipates heat through its composite skin rather than relying on drag-inducing radiators and fans. Driving style plays a role, but low mass and regenerative braking soften the impact of aggressive inputs. Even terrain and headwinds have less influence when efficiency margins are this wide. Range calculation itself is refreshingly straightforward. Battery capacity divided by energy consumption determines how far the vehicle can go. When consumption is low enough, even modest batteries deliver extraordinary distances. Real-world testing has confirmed that these calculations aren't theoretical. They translate directly to observed performance. What makes this approach so powerful is how each efficiency gain amplifies the others. Lower weight allows for a smaller battery. A smaller battery reduces weight further. Better aerodynamics reduce energy demand, making solar charging viable. Solar charging reduces dependence on the grid altogether. It's a cascading effect where every optimization strengthens the next. There are still challenges ahead. Scaling production is no small task, and timelines have shifted more than once. Yet the engineering itself has been validated through wind tunnel testing, real-world coast-down measurements, and proving ground data. The efficiency is measurable, repeatable, and undeniable. If this vehicle reaches mass production, it won't just offer impressive range. It will redefine what efficiency means in personal transportation. A car that rarely needs charging. A road trip vehicle capable of crossing states without stopping. A design that proves radical efficiency isn't a compromise, but a new standard. The real question is no longer whether the numbers add up. The question is how quickly the rest of the automotive world will be forced to catch up.